We're back out here working on the sawmill shed and we have accomplished a lot so far. Last time we got the posts and the beams up and we also got some additional bracing done. Eric right now is working on spacing the rafters. We're hoping that those go up by the end of today. Keep in tally of what we're doing out here and we are on day five of the project and we are on our third gallon of gas on the sawmill. So not too bad, but we do have more wood to cut. Moving along here, I just got the whole, um, I guess, section on this part of the beam where we're gonna put our rafters. Our rafters are two inches by six inches, so they're nice and sturdy, and we're gonna do them every two feet, so 24 inches on center, and then a couple of them, I think maybe where some of these beams meet, we're gonna double them up. We got up some bracing yesterday, which we've never done before. We've never cut 45 degree angles and put these things in on these back ones. I don't know if we actually needed these ones. So you put these in when you have like a long span and you can't put a post in the ground, but we did the front, which I'll show you. And it looks so good that we want to put these ones here. These ones are five and a half inch by five and a half inch. And we use these really cool lag screws. I think these are eight inches on this one, but check out the front ones we put in. Big beefy ones. The front is where we needed it. So we did 10 inch, I think these are still called lag screws or lag bolts, something like that. We did half, they're half inch thick and they're 10 inches long. And then these beams themselves, I think these are four feet on the long end. And we had to do that because this is a sawmill shed. So you need to bring long logs in here. We have, it's almost 20 feet right here, this span. In a perfect world, you could put like a beam right in the center, but that's just not gonna work. So when you put these supports in, it takes the weight off of that point and it kind of redirects it into this post. So essentially we have like another post right here. Turned out really good. Yesterday we were also busy cutting all of our rafters. We got a stack of them over here. Got a little snow last night, but like I said, these are two by sixes. I think we cut like 21 of them and these are cut at a little over 16 feet. Um, they're not all the way ready to use yet. What we have to do is we have to go along and we have to make sure that both sides are completely square. So we'll do that in the miter saw and then we'll take our measurement. And I believe our measurement's gonna be just under 16 feet. We're using 16 foot metal roofing for that back section. I'm gonna climb up on the tall section here. We gotta get the snow off it and we gotta get that one marked off. And I guess it's time to start working on the rafters. our notch on the back so we'll be left with 16 inches over the back 16 and a half inches plus the roof so we'll be left with about 19 inches of coverage on that back side they're about five and a half inches because our posts are five and a half inches so this will go right to the front of the posts and they should be one inch you mean the beam one inch deep yeah the beam one inch deep So then if I mark it like this and I cut on the outside of my line. Should be good.
got all 21 of our rafters cut and we decided to notch these ones this time around. In the past, we have just left the uh, two by sixes or whatever we were using um, kind of not notched. So I have like a little example here. If this is the beam, you could imagine um, this is the rafter. And let's just use this as an example for like the back part of it. You can see that all that pressure is on one corner. And when we did our last lean to, we noticed after a few winters that the heavy wet snow over time kind of tweaks the rafters and it tweaks the actual beam too as well. So that's why we notched it. Eric's not a huge fan of doing that because it does compromise the wood just a little bit. You can see it takes away from some of the, uh, the girth we'll say. You can see how this one that he cut is gonna fit nice and snug on the beam. So we shouldn't have, shouldn't have issues with twisting. We don't actually get really wet, heavy snow here or a lot of it. So it's honestly not really a concern, but we wanted to try that this time around. And then he's just going to toenail him in. And our roof is going to be, I think it's like a 312 pitch. And that means that it's going to have a slight slope to it. So we're going for about a three foot difference. So the top is going to be much closer to 10 feet. And then the back is going to be much closer to seven feet. And we're hoping that maybe some snow will shed off of that. We don't really know. We usually keep our roofs a little bit flatter than that. So we're going to get these rafters up. The rafters are up. That was an accomplishment. It's starting to look like a structure now. So we used the winch on the players and we had to hook to the right of that big beam. For some reason, the building was just like leaning back a little bit, but we pulled it straight and then we nailed all the rafters in and it's holding exactly where we want it. But one of the other things we want to do on this structure is it's not just going to be a lean to like this. It's going to actually have a little overhang out the front. We're going to build that out of two by fours. Uh, not today, probably in a couple days, but tonight what we do want to do is our posts where we've anchored them into those little uh, anchor brackets in the concrete. They're just nailed in right now. We've got some big bolts we're going to put in there. So we're going to try to drill those out, get the bolts in, and hopefully it would be nice to get on the roof again. And we're going to put some one buys down so we can screw the metal roofing into that. It actually looks like a house now, you know what I mean? A house for the sawmill. Isn't it so pretty? It's, once you get the rafters up, it looks good. <laughs> Does that look straight? Full throttle. Oh yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to push at all. No, it pulls it. Keep going.
Can I say if I want to cut these off now or just measure them all later and then cut them probably? Probably tomorrow. After another long day outside, we have gravitated back towards the cabin and we are ready to make a dinner and we have something delicious on the menu. We are making a creamy chicken soup with gnocchi added to it. We had to process some roosters recently. We hatched out a bunch of chicks this spring or actually this summer and we just have too many roosters right now. So we are processing them slowly. I had two cooking down and we have a bunch of stock and some of the meat left. We also have gorgeous produce we were able to get some produce from a few local farms and then also a few folks down the road from us and when i say local i actually mean like a few hours away but it is still awesome produce so these are potatoes got some gorgeous parsnips here and a lot of that's going to be going into the soup eric and i are lucky to have a lot of canned food that we have jarred up over the years but uh, we have had to rely a lot on the grocery store this year without having a garden. So there's a big difference when we get produce like that and it definitely tastes a lot better when it was grown in someone's soil. We're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned and chopped up and sauteing with some butter and then we're gonna steam our potatoes for the gnocchi. Parsnip and carrots in the pot. And something kind of neat is that a lot of this produce is actually not super fresh. I know that sounds weird, but uh, we've been storing it down in our basement or not basement. It's a crawl space. We have a crawl space and that's where a lot of it's been stored. So some of the stuff like the carrots are over a month old and they are storing really nicely down there. So that is just really awesome to have, even if we couldn't grow our own stuff. Um, this onion is from the grocery store, but I actually bought it like three weeks ago and I've had it just sitting down there. Maybe that's not that cool, but I thought it's storing stuff really nicely. We've got our gnocchi going in the back. Eric's tending to that. We're gonna add some spices to the soup. And then I'm also going to add some of the celery stock that we made a long time ago. We made it October of 2020 and it's still good. Um, we don't have any celery right now, so I figured that this would work. And I'm gonna actually immersion blend this to make the soup a little chunkier. Did you look at that? Looks gorgeous. We're gonna eat dinner and I am pretty certain that we cut all the rest of the wood that we need for the sawmill project. So we're gonna be back out there tomorrow. These are some of the two by fours we got and these are gonna be our trusses to support our front roof overhang. Let me show you what I'm talking about over here. You're gonna come into the sawmill and we are gonna have a small overhang on the front. It's gonna be about four feet. That's gonna to be to keep snow out, keep rain out, things like that. And how it's gonna be built is the roof is gonna be built out of two by fours. You can see I've got a string on here to kind of get these lined up. This was kind of uh, difficult for us to do. In the end, what we ended up doing was we used this little triangle tool that gives you an angle. So we put one up, we liked it, we took the angle and we were able to put four up and then we've tied a string along this. We need to tighten this string. It's been sitting out here all night, but when you tighten this string up, we should be able to go along and just put all the other ones up nail them into those back rafters. And since these are just kind of hanging out here on the front, we need some support to support all the wood we're gonna put on here and the metal roof. So we've got a pretty cool design of a truss that goes back. So this one's actually built out of a two by four also, and it's gonna connect this rafter 
back into those rafters. And as you can tell, when I push down on it, it is just like extremely solid. As soon as we get this all up, the last step on this project is gonna be metal roofing. Picking through some of our scrap boards. These are all one buys, and what we're using them on is on top of the rafters, so the metal roofing will have some support. Or cut a lot of these when we were cutting all our wood. That's a cool one. I need some straight, some straight ones. Okay, I got two to start. We noticed yesterday that we were having some trouble with our nails on the framing nailer. We're using I think three and a quarter inch nails and our wood is it's frozen it's green wood so it's not dried and they're just not doing their job so usually when you nail like a rafter into a beam or something like that it just really nails it in but we were having trouble with these front rafters here we ended up having to screw them in and i believe it's because the wood's frozen the nails just aren't doing their job but on this nail gun this is a siding nailer. This is the one we've been using on the one buys on top of the rafters to nail those in. And this one seems to be doing a really good job. And I think it's cause on these nails, they're kind of like ribbed. I don't know if you can see that, but they have little grooves in them and they're not as long of a nail. I think this is maybe like a little over a two inch nail, two and a quarter maybe. And these ones are gripping really good. So we're gonna put some one buys up on this front roof section to get them kind of leveled out. We're gonna try to just put one on there and then we'll work on the trusses. Yeah, this should help because it'll help line up all the boards. Oh yeah, they're all lined up now, huh? from that right now. Start buying, I'll just throw it up. It'll be fine. Like that, right? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can do the edge because the first oh, one we right. ever did, the it was a live edge. got all of our one buys up on the roof and we did a ton of them. So this thing's gonna be super sturdy. You're gonna be able to walk on the roof and just step anywhere. And the front overhang roof is extremely solid and it's just really rigid now. We're super excited. I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow's metal roofing day. And when that metal roofing gets like this light powdery snow on it, it is like a slip and slide. So we'll have to deal with that when we get there. The last thing we wanna do tonight is get the trim pieces on the front roof and the trim pieces on the back. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> We're gonna complete this project today and we got snow last night obviously. So Eric's getting that off the roof. Hey you gotta do the whole backside too. Thank you, I know. <laughs> 
It's not that easy, actually. I don't know. You got to uh, back up the same way you're going a little more. Which way do you That way. Now back I up. I don't think we're going to hold this thing on the We need to go this side. We're going to do it on this side. The nice side can hang over. Right? Yeah. Then you overlap it, and then that side, when we cut the last one, we'll flip the last one. Roofing day can be one of the easiest days of the project and it is not the case with this roofing. We have been like fighting it all day. The problems we're running into, the, it's not that steep of a slope, but the roofing has like this powdery snow on it. And if you stand on it or sit on it, you just like slide off the back. And then also the panels are wanting to slide off the back of the roof. So we got about halfway done and then we realized that our measurements were not correct and our roof was a, just a hair off, about an inch. An inch isn't a big deal, but when you're doing 36 feet of roofing, by the time you get to the end, it is a big deal. So we pulled all the panels off, we realigned it, and we got it up. It looks pretty good, and I'm thinking about it. This is probably the biggest span of roofing we've ever done. We've done 16 feet, but not 36 feet long. We have the front to do. It's getting late in the evening. The front started as 16 foot panels, but I cut them down to four foot sections. That's why we got this small little overhang we're gonna cover. Let's put the tractor up there. We're gonna see if we can get them on. The hardest part is these panels can't just sit there while you screw them on. So you gotta hold them on, get them perfect and screw them on. Let's see if we can get them up there. fun okay you can bring me down thank you thank you well I don't know if you can tell but that was a straight-up nightmare um, I definitely do not advise doing roofing in winter in Alaska um, my gloves are frozen my hands are they're actually okay they're not too bad but that was really hard the Panels don't want to stay there and Eric kind of came up with this shim system. My brain's not with me right now, but he came up with a way to keep the panels kind of still and at an inch overhang, which is what we wanted. But it still was really tricky to get the screws in with the ice and all that. Um, we switched places and I finished off the, the last part, but we're not going to be able to show you what it looks like until tomorrow. So we'll check it out then. Well, that's her and thank goodness it is straight because we were not going to rip it off today and put it back on um, it looks it looks really looks really good looks nice the overhangs about an inch on the front and I think on the sides we left two and a half to three I think it's closer to three on the back for for snow when it kind of melts so we don't get any sort of 
dripping onto the wood. Let's get on a ladder and head up and check out the roof and see what our final pitch is. Twelve eight. Eight twelve. Eight twelve. Eight twelve. Uh. Technically, shouldn't you have like a square? We don't have one. Okay. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's about exactly eight twelve. Nice. So that's yeah. a steep pitch. That's steep. That's the steepest we've ever done. So this back one is obviously a lot less steep. <laughs> and what you do is you go out a foot from pretty much any point on the roof. But let's say we're gonna pick the end just to make things easier. So that's a foot. This would help if I had the right tool. So like a little, um, what is that called? An L, an L-shaped measuring ruler. Um, it's, so that's 12. I'm guessing that's flat. Pretty. Two. Pretty rough. Two to three. Yeah. We got our length, which is 12. And we're just gonna estimate the rise I mean, it's probably under three. So we were hoping for a 312. And just what that means is, so if you go out 12 um, inches, a foot on the roof, and then you go down and hit, hit the roof again, that's your angle. So we are at a 312 because it dropped three inches. And the front was eight inches. It dropped eight inches, so much steeper. So that's what it means when you hear like 612 or 1212. And I, I just learned that recently. I didn't know that up until a few days ago. This may not shed snow, but it is super slick and we don't get that much snow here. And the structure itself is very strong. So I'm not thinking that it's gonna be a problem at all, but the front I think is definitely gonna shed the snow, which is awesome. All right, we're gonna head back down and give you a little overview of the project. Once again, we have finished another project and I am dang happy about it. The shed looks amazing. It kind of reminds me of when we did our wood shed back at our other place. I know that I was, I didn't want to build it. And when we did build it, it was like my favorite place to hang out. So <laughs> this is already the same way, huh? I agree. Awesome project. Super stoked to get it done before winter really sets in. It started to get a little harsh there. I mean, we're working with very short days. How long did this project take to us to complete? Yeah, we were keeping tally, so eight days, like Ariel said. Eight days. Ariel thought it would take eight days. I was like, there's no way we're getting that done in eight days. We short did. Days. Yes, short days. So, I mean, the sun doesn't come up till late, and it goes down really early. It's super cold. So, I mean, we're, we weren't getting out here till like 11 in the yeah. morning. <laughs> there was more challenges with the cold, too. Things that took us a little longer, I'll say for sure. Definitely. It was challenging to do it. And we moved to this place, and we kind of knew that we were going to, I'm going to say we got the opportunity to kind of do yes. things over again, start from scratch. And that was kind of one of the big things was getting this sawmill covered and protected. This bad boy is going to get a lot of use at this new property. Yeah, it's no joke. It was an investment, and we bought it several years ago. It never really had the right home. Now no. it has a real home it's covered it's out of the elements which is awesome but then also Eric gets like an extended season here because you can work in the rain you yep. know in the spring or snow and same thing right like this year this time next year right you could be working here next November we could be cutting with this thing and we won't have to deal with the snow as much we'll still have to deal with the cold but that's all right and this spot here we were eyeballing it ever since we first came to this property and we thought this is going to be a perfect place to put a sawmill, big logs, be able to move around with the tractor. And I mean, it's just worked out great here for us. It's in full sun, which is great. And the trucks can come in and drop off logs, which is, I think that's kind of like a huge thing. We use the space, right? With logs and yeah. moving with the tractor. and Yeah, it's hard to tell from the video right now, but we started stacking our slab wood, extra logs, the big logs, extra one buys, and our space here is kind of shrinking in. So you need a lot of space if you're running a sawmill. We didn't have a lot of trees here. We had to get the concrete pad done earlier in the year. Yep, that so was fun. Up on concrete, yeah, the concrete's probably my favorite part of the sawmill, honestly. Yeah, this area was just kind of like an open meadow. Like Ariel said, we didn't have to take down any trees. It was wide open. That was our first concrete job, so that was pretty awesome. Something else we were kind of keeping track of, which is something we've never really kept track of, is the gas usage. We had a viewer kind of comment something, and it got my, my mind thinking, and I know our sawmill doesn't use very much gas. At least I didn't think, right? Right. I'm usually the one that fills it up, and <laughs> I mean, this was a big project with a lot of cutting, and I will say there was 
like one or two days where the throttle was frozen. So I just kind of left it. So the sawmill was like wide open the whole time I was cutting. We used a little more gas then. I have confirmed that the sawmill has a gallon and a half tank. I thought it was three and a half gallons. So we used a gallon and a half. I put a gallon in it and then that was pretty much it. We ran a little more. Right? We've, so. We ran for like 20 more minutes. So we used two and a half gallons of gas in the sawmill on this whole project. Which is good, good. Cause we definitely got some extra wood, right? You know, you get extra pieces. So I think that was pretty dang good, right? It was really good. And the eight days that this project took to complete, that's cutting all the lumber too. So, I mean, I'm pretty impressed with that. Yeah, it was new for us to build at this time of the year. And it was also quite, quite challenging as you saw. Something that we thought would be kind of fun is to disclose kind of how much we spent on this bad boy i'm gonna call it on the structure <laughs> um it's it's not like i'm like oh this is so cheap it's it wasn't cheap um i think in alaska you know you're just looking at a lot higher prices um than than some other places we'll say like just elsewhere previously where we've lived obviously there are a few expenditures that are higher like the tractor or sawmill just tools and equipment so we're not including that we're including just like what the cost was for us to build this structure and the first biggest thing i think which was like save we save the most is our lumber for years since we've been up here and we've had the sawmill we've always got our own lumber this year we decided because we had so many projects let's get some wood dropped off we got 14 cords of wood dropped off it's 250 a cord that's for these real big diameter like sawmill logs he was calling them and we got a pretty close estimate on how much we used and we used seven logs which is about two cords of wood so 500 bucks on wood. Yeah, we did the math on if we were gonna buy this from the store and it was pretty hard because you can't buy these exact measurements. And we also, I mean, it's a little difficult to just add all that up, but I feel very confident that it would have been over $2,000 to buy. Well over 2,000, yeah. Yeah, and there's some big, there's some big posts and beams in this involved. Um, we actually have a little list that we can read off to you. These are some of the prices of like, um, I guess some of the lumber we use, we use two by sixes, two by fours, that big beam on the front, those are expensive if you have to buy them from the stores. Most of these are prices from Home Depot or like local hardware stores that carry kind of um, unique sizes of lumber. This is pretty approximate. We just looked up just three different sizes. The beam or the posts that are sitting up, a six by six by 10, those are $58 a piece up here. Uh, Not pressure treated or anything. Just, just regular pure... uh, Douglas fir green wood. Yeah. And then a pretty common piece of lumber is a two by six, 16 feet long. For our rafters, we use 23 of those. And is that including the front? I can't even remember. The front is a two by fours. So that's just the back rafters. Yeah, two by six by 16. Those are $18 a piece at the Home Depot. And then the big beam. Oh yeah, the big beam across the front, just the one, the center one that was, uh, this is the most comparable one I could find. It's a glue lamb beam. So it's like a laminated wood beam. Uh, five and a half inches by 11 inches. Ours is five and a half inches by 10. And this one's 20 feet long. I think ours is 21 feet long. That was $725 at the, the local hardware store for that one. So it's easy to see kind of how we got to that estimate. Um, we're not even including all that. We just kind of tried to roughly estimate. It was probably really well over 2000 It was, yeah, for sure. So we spent maybe not even 25% with this wood that we have here. Things add up quite a bit. You may be surprised in the hardware department, the metal roofing is, it's decently priced. I mean, it's not cheap, but. It's gone up a lot since we've moved here. I'm always amazed by the little things that add up, you know, like the nails and stuff like that or caulking. Um, clearly there's no caulking on this project, but what was it? Do you remember? Um, well, I have it for you. If you we don't. bought the roofing at Lowe's. It was the cheapest place we could find it. Also, they mucked them up with the forklift or something. So quite a few of them were damaged. So we got a small discount. Yeah, we wouldn't have bought the damaged ones, but that's all they had. So we got a small discount. The roofing for this whole entire project, just the metal roofing is $1,200. So it is not cheap. And the hardware is coming in just a little bit lower than that at about a thousand dollars for just hardware. And I mean, you could, you could have fastened it a different way. We don't really know how to do those types of, you know, wood to wood. Notching and stuff notching like that. Like that. that. And really, there were, what was it called, hun? Those, those post things were the most expensive. Yeah, the brackets that we bolted into the concrete and the post sat in, it was $500. $510 over for that. all those. Yeah. They were super expensive and that's kind of just the option that we found. Once you start getting into big lag bolts, like 10 inch bolts that are half inch and uh, 3 eighths inch, man, they're just costly. Yeah, quantity too, it added up quickly. Yep. So our grand total for the project was, can we do math real quick? $2,700, that's hardware, us buying the logs. Yeah, I don't think that's too shabby, but I mean, it's not good either. <laughs> no, I think uh, we've, <laughs> 
become accustomed to how much it costs to build up here and it is what it is we're way up here in alaska and a lot of this stuff most of the stuff isn't made up here so it has to get shipped up here yeah i think we're just happy to have like eric said the opportunity to be able to even do it you know and and the structure is so cool to reflect your own wood even when you have like you leave some of those live edges i know eric likes to do that and yeah. you look back and it's just it's so neat to be in there and look at that and get that final feel right it should be probably the first thing you build with a sawmill is to build your own sawmill cover and it took us what three years to get this thing up but yeah. it is beautiful i'm excited about it i think it's one of the coolest things we've ever built we're not quite done with it no we want to um i think we'll probably wait till the summer but the beams are sticking out a little bit on the edges we got to decide exactly where we want to cut those and we'll cut them we forgot the ridge cap at the store a few weeks back which is fine it's not worth the extra trip and then we also i would really like to stain or do something to the wood put some oil because you know the wood does wear we live in a dry climate but it it can get damaged this should be fine because it's up on concrete but rain and everything right we want to put a stain on it it should yeah and we've mentioned it before already in the video but this is all green wood none of this is Dry. dried or anything like that i mean honestly the reason i think we did it like that is we don't have time to cut all the wood let it sit and uh, not season but dry out and you know it's just one of those projects so we'll see how it works we'll see how it holds up and then once it dries out we'll be able to put a stain on it yeah yeah next next summer probably we've got to get all cleaned up out here oh we have tools all over the place <laughs> but that's going to do it for projects for the winter we hope you enjoyed our little discussion here and now on to the fun stuff we went and checked the lake and maybe are going to be going ice fishing right the ice is thick <laughs> enough let's go Woo!